So at this point, we have covered solutions, we dealt with concentration, and we dealt with the basics of acids and bases. So today we can finally start to get into pH and understand what pH represents. Before we do that, though, I mentioned to you earlier that I wanted to discuss a little bit about the nature of water and how we talk about water dissociating and how much of it dissociates. So at this point, you might want to pause the video, uh, get the notes down that you need to, and then continue on when you're ready. All right, so the first one I've actually shown completely, I'm showing how water is going to self-ionize. It's going to break apart into the hydrogen ion and also into the hydroxide ion. Now we can show this in a slightly different way. We can show two water molecules interacting. I think at this point, with the knowledge you have about how water behaves as an acid or a base, you could probably do this yourself. So at this point, why don't you take a moment, and before you continue on, see if you can actually predict the products of what would occur if one of these water molecules acts as an acid and the other acts as a base. So let's see how you did. It really doesn't matter which one I say is which, so I'm going to say that this one is going to act as the acid. So in this case, this one's going to act as the hydrogen donor. So from here, it will donate to the other, the other water, and let's see what the products will be. This one's going to turn into the hydroxide ion. And my other water molecule is now going to become the hydronium ion, H3O, with a positive charge. And if you remember back to what we said earlier, that the hydronium ion is synonymous with the, hydro with the hydrogen ion, we see that these are really the exact same thing, just showing the addition of a second water molecule. Again, the production of hydroxide and the production of hydrogen or hydronium ion. So no matter which way you write it, we're really showing the same thing that hydrogen ion is produced and hydroxide ion is produced. And if you keep this in mind that we typically associate the hydrogen ion with acid and we associate the hydroxide ion with a base, we should start to understand why we consider water to be neutral. And let's address that a little bit more now. So take a moment before we continue on. You might want to jot this down or if you feel the need, maybe it make more sense to hear what is going on with this slide, understand a little bit of the information and then continue on. So I've shown the dissociation of water one more time, and this is what you have to think about. Consider it like a ratio. If we have one water molecule dissociating into one hydrogen ion and one hydroxide ion, then I think we can agree that the concentration or the amount of this produced will be identical to the amount of hydroxide produced. So, one other thing. I will not go into too much of the detail as to how we get these numbers, but I want to have you just start to think about what this number means in relation to water itself. What we're saying is that when water dissociates, the concentration, and this bracket stands for concentration, it stands for molarity, what we're going to say is that this concentration is going to be equal. These two are going to be identical because one molecule produces one to one. And the concentration is one times 10 to the negative seven. What that, what we can think about it in a different way is for every billion or so of these water molecules, one single water molecule will actually dissociate. So very little is actually dissociating. The vast majority remains as an intact molecule. Now we can use this number to actually create a new constant, and that's what we're going to talk about next. This constant's referred to as the ion product constant for water, Kw. I think at this point it makes more sense. Get this information first, and then you can take notes as I explain what each thing represents and how we came to these numbers. All right. I'm cheating you guys a little bit. I'm going to cut out this idea that we talk about at the next level of chemistry where we talk about the equilibrium expression. But if you understood an equilibrium expression, if you're interested in learning more about it, I'll look it up online and I think this will make more sense about what I'm doing here. But what I'm saying is that the concentration of the hy hydrogen ion multiplied by the concentration of the hydroxide ion is going to equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. And I think you know where that this number is coming from. It's going to be 10 to the negative 7 times 10 to the negative 7. Following my exponent rules, it would be 10 to the negative 14. So KW, this is a number that I strongly suggest you put to memory because you'll be using it enough that it would make more sense to just have it there instead of having to look it up. So now let's think about how these things relate to one another. We mentioned before, this is always going to associate with an acid. This will always associate with a base. So if this concentration is greater than this concentration, then we'll consider the solution to be acidic. 
If the hydroxide concentration is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration, we would consider it to be basic. And if they're equal to one another, as we showed when water dissociated, it would be considered neutral. So take a moment, make sure that that, that makes sense to you. And if you have questions about it, that's something that should be addressed on Monday in class. All right, let's take a moment and let's actually try to work through a problem now and actually do the math behind this. So take a moment and try and get as far as you can without my help. So at this moment, pause the video and try this out. All right, let's see how you did. So I'm looking at what I've been provided. I have the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which in this case is 1.0 times 10 to the negative fifth. I'm going to ignore the 1.0 times. I'm just going to have 10 to the negative fifth. That's going to plug in for my concentration here. And then I'm going to multiply by my concentration of hydroxide ion, which I'm going to solve for, which is what we're asked to determine. And finally, that's equal to 10 to the negative 14th. And that's also my KW, my ion product constant. So at this point, I'm solving for here. I'm just dividing both sides by 10 to the negative fifth. And following my product rules, my exponent rules, if I have 10 to the negative 14th divided by 10 to the negative fifth, I'm just subtracting the two. Negative 14 plus five would be 10 in this case, 10 to the ninth, to the negative ninth. So what does this mean? Well, my concentration is one times 10 to the negative ninth, and that represents now my hydroxide concentration. So we can show one of two ways. I can either place brackets around it, representing molarity. I can place the capital M for molarity, or I can put moles over liters, but that is my concentration. Now let's answer the second part. Is this thing acidic? Is it basic, or is it neutral? Well, I have to compare my concentration of hydroxide ion to my concentration of, in this case, my hydrogen ion. Which one's greater? Don't be fooled by the negative exponent. The greater value would be the 10 to the negative fifth, my hydrogen ion concentration. So this solution would be considered acidic. Because the hydrogen ion concentration is greater. So now let's, once we understand this, now we can start to relate it to pH and understand the formula for pH. If there's any questions about this slide, and there might be questions about this slide, please write them down, be specific, and be ready on Monday to ask questions. We can go through this as well. So before we do pH, pH is based on logarithms. I think most people have been exposed to logarithms at some point in their math class or at some point in their math education. If you have not, briefly, take a moment, read through the slides. It's fairly straightforward. I hope these two simple examples help clarify how a logarithm works. And then just for a slightly more complicated example, something log, to the, to, to log 90, excuse me, log base 10 of 90. We know that it's, well, it's got to be close to 100 in value here, so my answer is going to have to be somewhere close to 2. And when you plug this in your calculator, and at this point in time, I don't expect you to be able to do this in your head, and all you have to do is just plug it in. So one, in this case, log 90 is going to be 1.95, rounded off, of course. And I don't expect you to have to understand the purpose behind logarithms. I hate to put it just on your math teacher, but this is something that's more due to a math class. If you're interested in understanding how a logarithm alters this number, I would suggest you actually pull out your graphing calculator and take log base 10 of x and observe how this graph actually grows as x grows. And I think you'll start to see the relationship between the two. So now I think we're finally ready for pH. And pH is pretty straightforward as long as you understand the, these three relationships here. So first, I have my pH, I have my pOH, and then I have a relationship that connects both of them together. So this one, I think you guessed, is going to deal with acids because it's dealing with the concentration of hydrogen. pOH is going to deal with bases because I have my concentration of hydroxide ion. And then I have a relationship right here, pH plus pOH equals 14. If you're wondering if that looks awfully familiar, it does relate right back to our KW value, our ion product constant our ion product constant for uh, water. So let's do a quick example. It is as simple as just plugging it into your calculator. The more difficult questions are going to ask you to understand the relationship and how these numbers come to be. But let's go ahead and work through this one right now. So the key to this is you have to keep a couple things in mind. First off, 
Sodium hydroxide, it's a base. It's a strong base, so we know this is going to break apart completely. So whatever the concentration of this whole thing is, we can assume is also the concentration of just the hydroxide ion. So my hydroxide ion concentration is 0 0.01. So all I have to do is plug it right into this equation here. So at the end, the POH is going to equal the negative log of 0 0.01, which in this case is going to equal 2. Now, we always have a tendency to report values as pH and not POH. So the last thing I have to do is then determine, well, if my POH is 2 and the whole thing equals 14, then my pH would be 12. And that is how we would want to report our final value. Sig figs, we'll deal with that another time. I'll be very clear about how many sig figs we want. We typically at least go to the whole value. And if we have enough sig figs, we can go on to a decimal. So this answer right here, we would have a pH of 12. And if you're familiar with the pH scale, this should seem about right because the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, and those values greater than 7 we consider to be basic or alkaline. So now that you've seen one example, I would like you to pause the video, work through these two problems, and then see if you can actually do them without a calculator if you see the pattern. If you don't see the pattern, plug them in, and I think you'll see the pattern right away. We can go over these answers on Monday, and I don't think you're going to have any issues with them whatsoever. Just one thing to keep in mind. Be aware that one is dealing with the concentration of hydroxide, and the other is dealing with the concentration of the hydrogen ion that will alter which one you're solving for, pH versus POH. And then the last one. This one's a little bit more of a challenge, because here we're given a pH, and we're trying to determine the concentration of H+. So in this case, I have to find a way to work backward. If you're comfortable manipulating logarithms, this shouldn't be too challenging, but this is how it's going to work. Since it's negative log, I'm going to actually take 10 to the negative 6 power, that's 6 coming from 6.00, the pH. So my concentration actually comes out to be 1 times 10 to the negative 6. And that is my concentration of H+. Plus. So that's my molarity, as stated.